English Grade 6. Quarter 3, Module 2, Lesson 3. Evaluating narratives based on how the author developed the elements, theme and point of view. At the end of this module, you are expected to 1. Identify the narrator's point of view and theme, and 2. Evaluate narratives based on the theme and author's point of view. Read the short narratives below. Then identify the point of view and theme. Write your answers in your answer sheet. Selection A. Jill looked up at the principal with tears in her eyes and said, I didn't do it. Mr. Castro. I can tell you who did, but it wasn't me. Mr. Castro put his hands on his hips. It doesn't matter, Jill. We found the spray can in your backpack. If you can't tell me a name, then you're going to take the fall for this one. Jill was now sobbing openly. 1. What is the point of view used in narrating the story? A. First person. B. Second person. C. Third person. 2. What is the dominant theme? A. Fearlessness. B. Firmness of actions. See courage and taking full responsibility of one's actions. Selection B. Welcome to Sky Ranch Pampanga Park. You are going to have so much fun. If you follow the rules, keep your hands and feet to yourself at all times. Do not try to climb out of rides while they are in operation. Only eat in designated areas. Follow these simple rules and you will have a great time. If you violate any of these rules, you may be asked to leave the park without a refund. Now, that you know the rules, go have yourself a fun time at Sky Ranch Pampanga. 3. What is the narrator's perspective? A. First person. B. Second person. C. Third person. 4. What is the prevailing theme? A. Carelessness. B. Fun and enjoyment. C. Following rules for fun and enjoyment. Selection C. It was a dark and windy night when the traveler came to our door. At first, we were afraid to open the door, but he kept knocking. Finally, I got afraid that he was going to knock down the door, so I opened it. That turned out to be a mistake. 5. What point of view was used in the passage? A. First person. B. Second person. C. Third person. 6. What is the theme of the passage? A. Quietness. B. Fear of darkness. C. Suspiciousness or apprehension. Selection D. More than just a road in Kazan City, Tandangsora, whose real name is Mel Quikino was fondly called the mother of the revolution. She was a single mother who managed the farm left by her deceased husband while raising her six children. Tandang Sora earned her nickname after taking care of Andres Bonifacio and other cat Puneros in 1896, risking her life as she provided them with food and nursed the wounded. Her bravery was best displayed after she was arrested by Spanish authorities who subjected her to grueling interrogations in hopes that she would reveal the location of the cat Ipoon and hide out. She refused to give in and was deported to Guam under the decree of Governor General Ramon Blanco. 7. What is the point of view used in the passage? A. First person. B. Second person. C. Third person. 8. What is the prevailing theme? A. Fearlessness. B. A woman's bravery. C. Love and compassion of a mother. Selection E. I am Jewelry Ahmed, a nurse with the Bar Ministry of Health. I am one of the frontliners in the Banks and Moral region who work hard in the battle against the COVID-19 pandemic. In times of uncertainty, it's a normal feeling to be scared, but don't be. This is what I tell my three children and grandchildren. They don't need to feel afraid of the rapid spread of COVID-19. I have been working in the public health for 25 years. 
Now, I am at the forefront to stop the spread of the virus in their region, especially among people with pre-existing conditions. I'm always mindful of safety precautions because I also care for my three grandchildren at home. This fight is mainly for them so that when they are old enough to understand what had happened in 2020, they would recognize that their Lola, grandmother, fought alongside the brave doctors, nurses, midwives, and all health workers in the banks tomorrow. 9. What point of view is used in the passage? A. First person B. Second person C. Third person 10. What is the theme of the passage? A. Love for work B. Love for grandchildren C. Bravery amidst a pandemic Lesson 3, Evaluating Narratives Based on How the Author Developed the Elements Theme and Point of View In the previous module, you've learned about one of the elements of narratives which is the plot. Today, you are about to learn another element of narratives. You will evaluate narratives based on how the author developed the theme and point of view. Read the selection and answer the questions they follow in your answer sheet. The Fox and the Grapes Aesop One afternoon a fox was walking through the forest and spotted a bunch of grapes hanging from over a lofty branch. Just the thing to quench my thirst, he thought. Taking a few steps back, the fox jumped and just missed the hanging grapes. Again, the fox took a few paces back and tried to reach them but still failed. Finally, giving up, the fox turned up his nose and said, they're probably sour anyway, and proceeded to walk away. Moral, it's easy to despise what you cannot have. Nothing comes easy without a hard work. So, work hard and reach your goals. 1. Where is the setting of the story? A. Forest B. Garden C. Riverside D. School 2. What did he find in the forest? A. Bananas B. Grapes C. Guavas D. Mangoes 3. Which of the following actions was not performed by the fox? A. He walked through the forest B. He asked the monkey to get the fruits for him. C. He tried again and again reaching for the fruits. D. He gave up and turned his nose saying, they're probably sour anyway. 4. Why did he say that the fruits were sour? A. Because they're not ripe yet. B. Because he doesn't like them. C. Because he failed to get them. D. Because he was not thirsty anyway. 5. Who was telling the story? A. Fox B. Grapes C. A. Sip, the writer D. Doesn't tell 6. What is the theme of the story? A. Sincerity B. Cowardice C. Hopelessness D. Hard work and patience How do I tell you? Tell me what you feel. Read the following narratives then identify the point of view and theme used by the writer. Write the number of your answers in your answer sheet. 1. As I walked through my bedroom door, my mom came to stand beside me. The walls, once decorated with posters, and the bookshelves once covered with toys and games were now barren. Only two boxes remained, an old collection of toys and one last box ready to go with me to college. Mom gasped and threw her arms around me as she saw the empty room. My excitement dampened. When I realized how sad my mom was to see me go. I couldn't believe today was the day I would be leaving for college, and even though I was excited, I sure was going to miss my family. A. What point of view was used in narrating the story? 1. First person. 2. Second person. 3. Third person. B. What is the dominant theme in the selection? 1. Sadness. 2. Excitement. 3. Apprehension. 2. Peering through the cardboard box, John could see Rex coming through the door, followed closely by his mom. He watched eagerly, excited to see what would happen. When mom began to cry while hugging Rex, John knew something was wrong. He quickly realized he would be leaving, 
separated from his friends stuffed in the box sitting on the floor. John turned his head away from the sad scene and came face to face with an old picture of himself, John and his beat Buddha. His eyes lowered and his heart sank with sadness. A. What point of view was used in narrating the story? 1. First person. 2. Second person. 3. Third person. B. What is the dominant theme in the selection? 1. Sadness. 2. Excitement. 3. Apprehension. As you read and evaluate narratives, think about these. How does the point of view affect your responses to the characters? How is your response influenced by how the narrator tells the story? Understanding Narratives and Its Elements A narrative refers to a story or an account of something, dealing with sequence of events and experiences, though not necessarily in strict order. It may be factual or fictional, and can be expressed orally or in writing. Harris and Hodges, eds. 1995 A narrative contains several elements, such as characterization, plot, and setting, that all work together to construct the narrative theme. Theme Narratives always contain at least one theme. Single themes can build on one another to convey a larger message, or a work may stick to one key theme. The theme is the central message or idea of a narrative. It tells the reader what the literary piece is all about. It is expressed through what the characters say, do and think, and through the actions that take place within the story. The theme is also revealed in how the plot and setting of the narrative are constructed and presented. By telling the reader what the story is about, the theme expresses what ideas or issues are raised within the story. Though a longer narrative, like a novel, might deal with several themes at once, it contains only one major theme. Examples of themes include friendship, family, love, respect for others, helping one another, world peace, equality, patriotism and nationalism, loyalty, cooperation, determination to succeed, etc. Point of view The point of view is the perspective from which a narrative is told. This also refers to the mode of narration that authors employ to let the readers hear and see what takes place in the story. Authors strategically choose the point of view that allows them to most effectively develop the characters and tell the story. They may choose to tell their story on three perspectives. 1. First person point of view involves the use of either of the two pronouns I and we. In the first person point of view, the narrator, who may also be a character, participates in the action of the story. Example. I felt like I was flying above the clouds. 2. Second person point of view employs the pronoun you. In the second point of view, the writer uses a narrative onlooker who is saying something about you, the reader. Example. You went to school that morning. 3. Third person point of view uses pronouns like he, she, it, they or a name of a character. In the third person point of view, the narrator does not participate in the action of the story as one of the characters but lets us know exactly what the characters think, and how the characters act and feel. We learn about the characters through this outside voice. Example. Once, there lived a hen with her five chicks. A hen was as red as beetroot. She had three friends, a duck, a cat, and a dog. They all lived happily. There are two different ways third-person narratives may be written or told omniscient and limited. Sometimes, third-person point of view is broken down further to objective point of view in which the author acts only as a narrator. This style is prevalent in many fairy tales. In the omniscient point of view, the author narrates from an outsider's point of view but offers the perspective of multiple characters. Example. Cindy got her test back and started crying immediately. It was failed. Her mother would never stand for it. She felt disappointed. She knew that she would be in big trouble. Then Jen got her test back. Jen cheered. She got a high score. Her mother would be so proud. 
Jen had studied hard for the test and she was satisfied with the results. She felt proud. Meanwhile, a third-person limited point of view story is written from an outsider's perspective, but the reader only follows the story based on what the main character knows. Example. John John examined the math book. It had been badly treated. The cover was torn and it appeared to be missing some pages. Still, John John knew that looks were less important than utility. He had learned that lesson long ago. Thanks, Mr. Castro. He said with gratitude. Mr. Castro looked up from his desk and said, Sorry we don't have new books, John John, but there's still plenty of good math left in that book. Mr. Thompson smiled. John John felt appreciative. Read the following passages and identify the narrator's point of view in your answer sheet. 1. It's simple to wash your hands the right way, and it usually takes no more than a minute. But did you know that simple scrub can help reduce the spread of everything from respiratory illness to diarrhea? Hand washing is also one of the best ways to remove germs, help avoid getting sick, and prevent the spread of germs. So, hand washing is important to remember, and an important habit to teach your kids. For effective hand washing, follow these five steps. First, wet your hands using clean, running water when available. Second, lather the front and back of hands, between fingers, and under fingernails with soap. Third, scrub hands together for at least 20 seconds. Fourth. Rinse hands under clean, running water. Finally, dry hands completely with a clean towel, or air dry. 2. Do you love candy? I asked my friend Roxas. I always make friends with other people. 3. Daniel was nervous about going to Patricia's birthday party. He was afraid that he wouldn't know anyone but Patricia and she would be so busy with her guests. Mom, I don't want to go to the party. Daniel's mother furled her brow and said, Daniel, we already told her we'd be there. We bought her a present. We have to go and give it to her. Daniel shook his head. He still didn't want to go. His mom put her hand on his shoulder. 4. Pete didn't feel like doing homework. He felt like playing baseball. He grabbed his mitt off the shelf and began to fantasize about being out in the field. His fantasy was interrupted shortly by the opening of his bedroom door. It was his mom. She started to yell, Pete, you're not failing baseball class. You're failing math class. You need to study. Put the mitt away. Pete put the mitt away, but he didn't know the first thing about studying math. 5. If you are confused about something in class, don't wait. Raise your hand and ask for help immediately. Do it while your teacher is still explaining the material. Your teacher will probably be happy that you are taking an active part in your education and should attempt to explain the material in a different way. If you are still confused, ask your teacher if he or she is available after class to give you additional instruction. You are worth it. Don't give up on yourself. The flower grew beautifully, rose bush, but some wicked hand had broken the stem. The dead child said, that was so pitiful. Let us take it to heaven in God's garden so that it will grow there. The angel took up the rose bush, then he kissed the child, and the little one half opened eyes. The angel picked also some beautiful flowers, as well as a few humble buttercups and heart's ease. Now we have more flowers, said the child, the angel only nodded and he did not fly upward to heaven. It was quite still in the middle of night in this great town. They remained still and the angel came over a small, narrow street. There are dirty plates, pieces of plaster, rags, old hats, and other things that is not good to see. In all this confusion, the angel pointed to the pieces of a broken flower pot. The earth had been kept from falling flower pot and to a lump of earth which had fallen out of it. The earth had been kept from falling to pieces by the roots of a withered field flower, which had been thrown by the rubbish. 
refer to the narratives you have read on independent activity 1, reread the texts then determine the theme of each one by choosing from the pool of answers below. Use the diagram below for your answers. Do this in your answer sheet. Read the following narratives, then answer the questions that follow in your answer sheet. Narrative 1. Long ago in a little town in the east, there lived a couple. They lived in a modest house together with their son and the father of the husband. For a while, the old man lived happily with his son, his daughter-in-law and his grandson. But when he grew very old, he became very feeble. Every time he ate at the table, he always broke a plate because his hands trembled so much. The old man's awkwardness soon made his son angry, and one day he made a wooden plate for his father. The poor old man had to eat all his food on his wooden plate. When the grandson noticed what his father had done, he took some tools and went down under the house. Then, he took a piece of board and began to carve it. His father saw him and said, What are you doing, son? The boy replied, Father I am making wooden plates for you and mother when you are old. As the son uttered these words, tears gushed from the father's eyes. From that time on, the old man was allowed to eat at the table with the rest of the family. He was no longer made to eat from a wooden plate. What point of view was used in narrating the story? A first person B second person C third person. 2. What human right is highlighted in the last two sentences of the selection? A right to vote. B right to education. C right to be respected and treated well. D right to acquire property. 3. What is the theme of the narrative? A presence of mind does more good than harm. B treat others as you would wish them to treat you. C. Treat parents well only when they are young and capable. D. The old man and the weak never deserve good treatment. Narrative 2. We are in a different war with COVID-19. This is not like ISIS where we can see the enemy, said Dr. Alicia McMack, Rural Health Unit Officer in Lumba Bay Abao, Lanao del Sur. The impact of the Mayorai city siege in 2017. An armed conflict between Philippine government forces and ISIL-affiliated militants, aggravated the poverty situation in Lanao del Sur, which is the poorest province in the country. More than 17,000 Lanao people displaced by the conflict remain in temporary shelters in the province. The COVID-19 pandemic has increased their vulnerability on top of the ongoing humanitarian situation. Dr. McMack and other healthcare workers face enormous pressure to stop COVID-19 infections. As government-run hospitals face shortages of critical supplies to help contain the spread of the virus, UNICEF is providing disinfection supplies, tents, personal protective equipment, and infection prevention and control training for community health workers, sanitary engineers, and inspectors. Based on the story, the character is likely to be a blank. A by Kalena. B Kapanpangan. C Muslim. D by Kalena. 2. What is the point of view used in narrating the story? A first person. B second person. C third person. D fourth person. 3. What is the theme of the narrative? A heroism. B faith in God. C love for peace. D war and conflict. Read the following excerpts from the narratives then identify the narrator's point of view. In your answer sheet, write F if the excerpt from the narrative is in the first person, S if it is in the second person, and T if it is in the third person. 1. You're a mountain climber. Three years ago, you spent the summer at a climbing school in the mountains of Colorado. Your instructor said that you had natural skills as a climber. You made rapid progress and by the end of the summer you were leading difficult rock and ice climbs. Except from the abominable snowman by Ray Montgomery. 2. It all began when Miss Frizzle showed our Class A film strip about the human body. We knew trouble was about to start, because we knew Miss Frizzle was the strangest teacher in the school. 
Excerpt from the Magic School Bus Inside the Human Body by Joanna Cole and Bruce Daglin. 3. They spoke no more until camp was made. Henry was bending over and adding ice to the bubbling pot of beans. Henry grunted with a tone that was not sympathy, and for a quarter of an hour they sat in silence. Henry staring at the fire, and Bill at the circle of ice that burnt in the darkness just beyond the firelight. Excerpt from White Fang by Jack London. 4. 168. That's how many hours there are in a week. If you're a student, you probably feel like this isn't enough. I know, you have so many assignments to do, projects to work on, and tests to study for. Plus, you have other activities and commitments. And I'm sure you want to have a social life, too. Wouldn't it be nice if you could study smarter, not harder, get good grades, and lead a balanced life? Excerpt from How to Study Smart, 20 Scientific Ways to Learn Faster by Daniel Wong. 5. Did they? I'm 5. I was 4 last night going to sleep in wardrobe, but when I wake up in bed in the dark, I'm changed to 5, abracadabra. Before that I was 3, then 2. Then one, then zero. Excerpt from Room by Emma Donahue. Independent Activity 3. Read the narratives that follow. Then, answer each question inside the box. Write your answer in your answer sheet. Narrative 1. Gabriela Sling is perhaps the most well-known among all the Filipino heroines, but she is almost always mentioned in tandem with her husband, Diego. Since their achievements are usually written about together, many forget that she had her own fair share of heroic acts as the first Filipina to lead an uprising against a foreign power. She was a fearless Ilocana warrior who assumed her husband's role as commander of rebel troops after his assassination in 1763. She rallied fighting forces, including the native Neg people, to carry on the war against Spain in their home province of Ilocos launching guerrilla attacks against Spanish garrisons, attacks that caused Spanish soldiers to fear her name. For her final battles at the liberation of Vigan, she led over 2,000 men to go against an army of over 6,000 Spanish soldiers backed by a powerful artillery. The battle proved unsuccessful for the general, so she and 80 remaining troops retreated to unexplored regions of Abra, where they were eventually captured. The Spanish made her witness the public executions of her men before publicly hanging the general herself in September 1763. Despite the loss, Gabriela Slang is still recognized for her immense courage in fighting for the independence of Ilocos. Who tells the story? What point of view was used? What is the prevailing theme? Read each passage from the different narratives and identify the narrator's point of view and the theme. Complete the table by writing the title of the passage under the appropriate column. Do this in your answer sheet. Narrative number one. Get rid of gadgets. Carrie loved her phone and her tablet. She was always looking at one or the other. Her parents would try to talk to her about her life, but she would just ignore them or give them monosyllabic answers until they left her alone. When she was at school, she'd sneak peeks at her phone under her desk whenever she could get away with it. When she was at parties, she spent more time interacting with the devices in front of her than with the people around her. Even at concerts and sporting events. Carrie seldom removed her eyes from these tiny screens. One day Carrie was walking home from a friend's house and watching a funny video of people slipping on ice. She began crossing the street just after the light changed. She was so into the video that she did not notice the oncoming traffic. She walked directly into the traffic while laughing at the falling people on her tiny screen and was hit by a bus. Carrie sustained mild injuries but both of her devices were destroyed. As far as she was concerned, her life was over. Narrative number two. Honesty is the best policy. Katie exhaled calmly. After several long nights of studying, 
she finally felt ready for the exam. Walking into her English class the next morning, Katie coolly focused on the task before her. As the teacher walked up and down the rows distributing the test, Katie heard a noise, PSST. Katie turned to see Shannon staring at her desperately. Shannon whispered, I forgot to study. Please let me copy off of you. I'll do anything. Katie refused, I can't risk it Shannon. Each knew that if the teacher caught them, they would both fail, but Shannon persisted, come on, Katie. Help me out? I'll give you 50 bucks. The teacher turned toward them from across the room. Ladies, please, it's test time. Katie didn't want to jeopardize her future, but $50 was a lot of money to her, so she silently nodded at Shannon. During the exam Katie kept her test document on the corner of her desk near Shannon, giving Shannon a clear view of all of her hard work. Shannon copied Katie's test exactly, even the writing portion word for word. After the test Katie approached Shannon in the hallway. When am I going to get the $50? Shannon sneered at her. Ha! Never. What are you going to tell someone that you let me copy? Please. Shannon snapped at Katie. Katie ran away crying, upset that she had been deceived and worried that she would get caught cheating. Narrative number 3. Enjoy life now. While most of his peers enjoyed high school, David did not. I can't wait to get to college and really start my life, he'd often tell himself. When David got to college, he found out that it wasn't much different from high school. I can't wait to graduate and get a job so that I can really get started on my life, David would tell himself. When he graduated from college and found a job, David realized that he did not really like working that much. I hate slaving away at work. I can't wait until my retirement. That's when my life is really going to begin, David told himself. He worked away his days and nights, enjoying them very little and always thinking about how things would be better when he retired. When he finally retired, he found that he was in too much pain to do the things that he had planned on doing earlier in life. Having nothing else to look forward to in life, David spent his final days on a bench in the sun, thinking about how much happier he would be in heaven. Write yes if the statement is correct and write no if it is not. Write your answer in your answer sheet. 1. Point of view may be classified into five perspectives. 2. Point of view refers to the mode of narration that the authors employ to let the readers hear and see what takes place in the story. 3. Theme refers to the central message of the story. 4. The second person's point of view employs the pronoun you. The writer uses a narrative on Luker who is saying something about you the reader. 5. The first person's point of view involves the use of either of the two pronouns I and we. The narrator who may also be a character, participates in the action of the story. 6. The third person point of view uses the pronouns like he, she, it, they or a name of a character. 7. Third person point of view may be told using omniscient or limited. 8. In a limited point of view, the author narrates from an outsider's point of view but offers the perspective of multiple characters. 9. A story narrated from an outsider's point of view but the reader only follows the story based on what the main character knows employs an omniscient point of view. 10. Theme and point of view are the only two elements of narratives. Read each story carefully, then write what you think the theme is. Prove your answer by writing at least one sentence explaining an event in the story that leads you to the theme. Do this in your answer sheet. Example. A crow perishing with thirst saw a pitcher, and hoping to find water, flew to it with delight. When he reached it, he discovered to his grief that it contained so little water that he could not possibly get at it. 
He tried everything he could think of to reach the water, but all his efforts were in vain. At last he collected as many stones as he could carry and dropped them one by one with his beak into the pitcher, until he brought the water within his reach and thus saved his life. Theme, if at first you didn't succeed, try and try again. Explanation, the crow might have died if he had given up, but he persisted and through his ingenuity, he was able to succeed. 1. Once, there was a mean little boy who lived in a small village. This mean little boy loved to mess with people, so one day he ran up to a sheep herder and shouted, Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is attacking the town. The sheep herder grabbed his staff and ran to defend the town, but realized he had been fooled when the boy started pointing and laughing at him. Aha! I made you jump! said the boy. Then the boy ran up to a farmer and shouted, Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is attacking the town. The farmer grabbed his pitchfork and ran to defend the town, but when the boy started pointing and laughing at him, he realized he had been tricked. As the boy went back to his family's farm laughing about the funny trick he played, he saw a real wolf in his father's chicken coop. As the wolf ate all of his father's chickens, the boy screamed over and over again, Wolf! Wolf! Please help us! But nobody came to help him. Theme. Explanation. Jenny hated her reading class. She didn't understand point of view or figurative language, and not knowing how to do the work frustrated her. She asked the teacher for help. But he spoke so fast and used such big words that she still couldn't understand. The teacher asked if she understood, and she nodded her head, but she didn't. Jenny's friend Katie knew that Jenny was having trouble understanding the lesson and, rather than just giving Jenny all of the answers, Katie explained to Jenny how to solve the problems. Katie spoke clearly and at Jenny's level, and Jenny was happy that she finally learned how to do the work. Later in the week, Katie was having trouble in math class. She didn't understand coordinates and was really frustrated. Seeing that Katie was having problems, Jenny, who understood math very well, taught Katie coordinates. Both girls made it to honor roll that quarter. Theme. Explanation. Determine the point of view from which the given texts are narrated. Then identify the dominant theme used by the writer. Write your answer in your answer sheet. Viewpoints, first person, second person, third person. 1. The stars were burning brightly in the night sky. The evening breeze felt cool on my skin. It was the last night of summer break and I was calm, oddly calm. It's not that I was excited to go back to school. I wasn't. School is a lot of work for me. But I was excited to see my friend again, and I knew that she would be there. Narrator's Perspective Theme 2. It was noon. The sun was high in the blue sky. The air was filled with the sound of lawn mowers and birds chirping. A door opened. A young boy walked outside. A woman's voice could be heard from the house yelling. Wait for me, Michael. The young boy did not wait. He ran to the sidewalk and began jumping. Yeah. Yeah. Machine gun. He yelled, pointing an invisible gun in all directions. He took imaginary shots every few seconds and pantomimed the recoil. Narrator's Perspective Theme 3. Chuck analyzed the engine. With his experienced gaze, he was able to tell that the vehicle needed a new fan belt. He figured that the job would take 20 minutes and cost about $10, but he had bills to pay. He summoned the customer over to him with a wave. Ma'am, he said, your vehicle needs a new radiator. It's going to take about 4 hours and cost around $500, he lied. The woman smiled. So, I get my car back tonight? She asked. That shouldn't be a problem, replied Chuck. 
The woman, still smiling, said, Thanks, Chuck. You're a good guy. Chuck felt a little guilty, but he smiled back at her and said, You're so welcome. Narrator's Perspective Theme 4. At the courthouse or the library, there was a large bulletin board, and for a dollar you could sign the board and write down your guess to win the car through the ice raffle. Of course, you never met anyone who had won, but only those who knew somebody who had won, and therein, in the winning, the simplicity was lost. Narrator's Perspective Theme 5. First, you will need to wash your hands and gather all of your materials. Once you've done that, follow all of the directions I in your cookbook. Put your crispy treats in the oven and cook for 30-35. Once the treats are cooled, you enter. Friends can enjoy. Narrator's Perspective Theme Search for narratives. Recall two narratives you have read before. Then, complete the table below by writing down the titles and identifying the themes of the narratives in your answer. Sheet Title of the narrative Point of view Theme <laughs>